Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're going to explore the world of CNC plasma machining. Let's start this out by talking about parts, but before we do that, let's look at what plasma actually is. Plasma is a state of matter, just like solid, liquid, or gas. When you see a spark in a light switch, that spark is plasma. When you see a bolt of lightning, that's also plasma. The temperature of that is 44,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now think about being able to take that power and harness it to cut metal or any other conductive material. Now here's how it starts, the hypertherm power supply generates the plasma and then it uses compressed air to form that into a roughly cylindrical shape. So now you have a, the shape of a tool that can actually cut through steel almost on contact. So then we put that on a CNC machine and then we let the CNC machine move around and create the shapes. That's what plasma is all about. Parts can come from a number of different sources. So let's look at the most complex. Let's say that your company does solid modeling and all your products or solid model. So this is the part we want to make, but I really can't do anything with that because the ProNest software it just requires a simple 2D drawing in either the AutoCAD or DXF format. So what we want to do is we actually want to create those. And so what happens is it turns out anywhere you have an edge like that is also a line. So I can go to layers and I'm going to turn the solid off and turn the lines on and you see now, that's what I really need, but we've added something else to that, and that is we've put those lines that we want cut on a specific layer, and that layer is called cut. And that's how we can tell Pronest what to do with geometry. So let's say you have a really complex drawing, but only part of it are these shapes. We just put the shapes on that layer, and Pronest will read that, and it'll ignore the other layers. Another source of drawings may be your customer or some other internal source. And one of the things you have to make sure if the drawing is good, and I'll tell you a little hint. This is advanced edit within ProNest, and if it shows up filled with green, the geometry is good. That means it's a closed shape, therefore it sees a shape. Also, if you look really close, you'll see that's where the lead-ins are going to go. So anytime you see a part that's drawn in green like that, and you'll have your lead-ins, then you know that part is, it can be processed. ProNest also has a built-in parametric system. Now, let me give you an example of that. These are common shapes, so let's just pick one of them. And what happens is, it's, think of this as a wizard. Now, there's what the basic drawing is going to look like, but I can change the numbers. So I can just say, okay, I want that to be 6. I want that to be 11. And you see, as I do that, it starts re restructuring it. I can even take that part and add geometry later. So if you look at a lot of those shapes in here, there's some really common things that we make, you pipe flanges, for instance. And that's all parametric, so the software has that built in. So some things like pipe flanges, it's just really easy to make using this wizard. Well, there's one other scenario on parts, and that is someone hands you a drawing with a sketch on it and some dimensions. And ProNest has that figured out also. If I go to the edit part list, and I click on this tab that says LibreCAD, it opens up a CAD system. And LibreCAD is technically open source, but uh, ProNest has actually integrated it into their, their software. Let me show you what a drawing looks like. Here's a bracket I actually drew in LibreCAD. So that started with a sketch someone handed me, and there's the part. So that's one other way of creating parts. Now that we understand where the part drawings can come from, let's look at an actual job. So here's a part list of parts I need to cut. There's actually the, uh, that model part. And you notice each one has a quantity on there. So the software will keep up with that. But there's something we need to do to set the job up first. Selecting the material is really important for plasma because each material has different settings. So that may determine uh, the spacing of the parts. So the first thing I wanna do is, is select the material. Let's go to this list here and you can see it. All right, here's a list of materials. Now, these are built into uh, ProNest. If you didn't have ProNest, that information is also typically in your hypertherm manual. That's where it comes from. But these are optimum settings. In this case, MS means mild steel. It's 0.135, which is 10 gauge. And we're cutting it with unshielded air, which means we're not putting any inert gases around the cutting action. So it's a basic plasma operation. So we need that, and then we need the material size. 
we'll reapply that. And then we need the material size. So we select the material based on the size of what's called our plate. In plasma, plate is a material. Now that everything's set up, let's look at how we actually would produce a part. So let's just say I'm gonna take this part, I'm gonna bring it down to the corner, and that would actually be fine. Now you notice it left a gap here and here. That's because in the settings we've told it, don't get any closer than a certain amount to the edge. Now, if I just needed that one part, I could just, here's a cut simulation, and we'll run it. And what you see there is what's gonna happen on the machine. It's gonna cut that part out. Now, I might want to cut more than one part, and this would be manually nesting. So let's just pick a part, and let's pick another one, and maybe this one. And you notice how it fits that together. Once again, it controls the space in between there. So I might just simulate that. Maybe this is what I want to cut. Once again, what you see is what you're going to see on the machine. That's how that gets cut out. That's manual nesting, but there's instances when that makes sense. So far, we've really just manually placed things. We haven't let the computer figure it out, but rectangular parts array really well. Let me give you an example of that. So first, let's go over here and let's tell it that we need 100 of these. And then let's drag one of these up here. And now I'm gonna hit this button that says array. Now you see, you see columns and rows, and it figures out how to put the most on there. And it's a really efficient system because it's rectangular, and once again, the material determines the spacing. So that's automatic. Plus, I can actually take a base plate or something like that and, and put it up there if I want and add another part. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. That's a really good use of material. Plus, you can substitute some other parts in there to fill the areas up. The real power of nesting is this, being able to take these parts that are unusual shapes with the quantities and figure out how to nest them on the sheet for the greatest yield. And all I have to do is click auto nest and it does it automatically. You see it place the parts. The first time I saw this, I thought it was absolute magic. Now that's the second sheet. Now I could actually add more parts to it if I wanted to. But let's go back to this first one. Let's look at this on simulation. It will play it. And when we get to the machine, this is what it's going to look like. This is the exact order things are going to happen on the machine. Now, let's visually validate this. Now that we've created the machine codes, there's two things left to do. One is to send the files out to the machine controller. The second is to print the documents so that the machine operator knows what to do.
plasma is an amazing technology. Imagine being able to cut steel with the power of a lightning bolt. That's what a shop saber sidekick does. You know, our goal has always been to make machines that last a long time. In fact, we have some CNC routers that we refer to as machine tool grade CNCs because the idea is if reasonably maintained, you should be able to use them for 20 years in the shop. When we designed the sidekicks, we really used the same philosophies. And you think that's way overkill till you really look at what happens in the process. Plasma generates a tremendous amount of heat. That arcs 40,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that heat rises and it affects the gantry. So if you don't have a massive gantry, it moves around because of distortion. All right, so we basically created a gantry design just like we have on the big machines, structural steel, welded, uh, really first class machining. And that becomes the basis. Well, when you have larger components, then you can't cut corners on motors either. But bigger motors help you also in terms of productivity because it, it enables the machine to actually move around the geometry much faster. So you get more output. Now let's talk about what actually get, goes into cost and how you would cut cost on a router. Well, first off, you have the power supply and the size of the power supply is strictly determined by how thick the material you want to cut is. It's physics, all right? And if you buy a cheap power supply, they're not reliable, so you gain nothing there. So what else is left? Well, okay, you can remove steel from the machine. Well, steel's sold by the pound. It's the cheapest thing in the machine. You gotta remove a whole lot of machinery before you save any money. And so that's what a lot of competitors do because they don't understand the science behind all this. So the culprit's 40,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you look at a machine like a, a Sidekick, that's a machine that will last you a long, long time in your shop. If you decide to save a few dollars and buy one of those cheaper lightweight machines, it's probably going to be a throwaway. That's not going to be a good business decision. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Plasma machining almost looks like magic, but it's not. It's science. Shop Saber has spent a tremendous amount of time on research and development to develop this Sidekick product line. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.